Okay, so, right now my big computer is broken, but I wanted to document this anyways because this is a good technique, and I think that it's important to, uh, to document good techniques and sort of describe how they're done so that people have an idea. So, Richard, this is mainly for you, buddy. We got this smiling guy here, this handsome gentleman. Alright, so basically, this is a shadow knockout. We're going to make this black and white, then we're going to knock out the shadow. So it's a pretty simple procedure. Uh, basically, how you do it, uh, the first thing we're going to do is make the whole thing black and white. So, there we go. Now you'll notice we have like a concentration of darkness, like it's kind of graded in the background. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of lay down... A, uh, a gradient to sort of deal with that on a very sort of general level and we're going to switch that to an overlay so that we don't lose the image underneath the gradient layer that we just put down um, so the one thing that we want to make sure is that we're not blowing out anything like and getting fragmentation along the skin and we're pretty good so I don't really think we have to touch the gradient at all when we squint he looks pretty consistent from top to bottom so then we can move on so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna make the whole background white and how we're gonna do that we're just gonna switch to our selection tool and then we're going to um, make sure that we have sample all layers on so that we're getting everything and fortunately our friend here is wearing a nice dark shirt and he's uh, been to the tanning salon lately so um, he's going to be pretty easy to separate from the white background. Uh, sometimes we're dealing with uh, people that are wearing white shirts and uh, what happens is it gets pretty treacherous trying to separate the selection. Um, yeah, so the idea with this, this is a non-destructive um, selection tool that we're going to be doing using a combination of uh, curve masks that are kind of layered on top of each other to sort of isolate and knock out the graded background and replace it with just a straight white background and get rid of this drop shadow here that we have as a result of the um, the lighting situation that the camera was taken in but we want to preserve all these nice details in the hair a lot of time in Photoshop what will happen when people are making selections are going to use a lasso or something like that and they're gonna go around the object as if it's solid but we don't want to do that because these guys have to look professional and they have to go on a website and be used to represent uh, their brands professionally so we can't resort to um, really amateur editing tools like that we have to do it proper and we're gonna do that by using non-destructive curve mask editing so now that we have most of the background selected here what we're gonna do is apply a curve mask and as you can see, it's going to make an instant mask because we have the selection already. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to start adjusting this mask until uh, just until we have the majority of the background white. We don't want to kill it in the beginning because we only want to push out, you know, the really subtle darks because what's going to happen, we're going to come along this later with the paintbrush and we're going to kind of apply the mask on the shadow and, and have apply it up to the uh, the shirt here but because we're using a curve mask rather than a solid selection we're gonna get all the little fibers of the clothing right that are that are nice and kind of subtle but we don't want to push the curve mask too far because what will happen is we'll lose all those fibers and we'll end up just getting left with kind of a rigid edge so now that we have this kind of applied we're gonna be putting a second one on but now that we have this applied we're just gonna want to come on in here and sort of refine it a touch yeah so we switch to our brush and I'm just gonna start brushing over top of the shadow a little bit just to make the shadow a little bit lighter so that when we apply the next curve mask it's easier to isolate the shadow versus the dark shirt that our handsome friend here is wearing and in doing so what that's going to allow us to do is kind of paint right on the hair right in the happy spot there and preserve the nice fine details that the hair makes 
crisp without having to resort to that really kind of cookie cutter pie selection that is the mark of amateurs. A lot of the times you go into like a, you know, like a shawarma restaurant or, you know, like a mom and pop restaurant or something like that. And uh, you look on the menu and you see these like these shawarmas and they're just like cut out on these like these horrible backgrounds, you know, but they look like they were cut with like a freaking a cookie cutter or something like that. All these shawarmas and these floating, you know, puzzles of chicken. I feel like I'm in a preschool for cannibals gone freaking topsy-turvy haywire or something, but anyway. You know, really I just enjoy the sound of my own voice. I challenge myself to see what kind of twisted metaphors I can come up with on a whim without stuttering and with getting perfect timing and good delivery. That is the nature of my insanity. Self-indulgence. So here we want to just focus... Whoops. That's a channel thing. Aw, oh, crap. So I gotta bring up the channel selection here and just deselect that because we don't want to see that at the moment. What that was doing, whenever you create a mask inside a layer, what's going to happen is it's going to create an additional channel. Once you've created that channel in Photoshop, you can then apply it to anything. You can use it like a selection, you can apply it to a portion of the image, you can apply it to another layer, you can use it to filter out you know, uh, various channels, uh, alpha, whatever, RGB, um, you can use it to, actually, yeah, I think that pretty much summarizes it right there, but, yeah, in being able to, uh, just simply use it to filter as a mask offers a tremendous amount of power. All right, so now that we have this fully painted out here, um, and the background is pretty much white, we're going to add another curve mask. And what we're going to—the objective of this curve mask is to finally drop out this shadow without obscuring the sides of our friend here and his hair. Without, yeah, without obscuring that, so that when we go over with the paintbrush, it's going to look good. We're going to get that natural kind of whatever. So let me drag this here so that you can see it. What, what am I doing? I should have just, uh, there. Now we want to go sharp and bring it back down quick. There we go. It's okay to even have just a touch of the texture when you're doing an effect like this because it's like, you know, people who really pay attention are going to know that it's edited, but we want to preserve more of the organics, right? So even having a little bit of noise like this is okay because even though it's sort of saying that, yeah, we, we, we mess with these photos a little bit. It's kind of preserving more of the organic situation that it was in, which kind of adds a layer of believability. That's a little bit of art theory for you. But now that we have this mask applied, what we're going to do is reverse it. We're just going to switch our, uh, our color, and we're just going to drop a fill level, like right on the whole mask. So now it's back to normal. So now that we have it set, we're going to now paint back on the mask just with our white. We're just going to go over the shadow because the background for the most part is already white. We're going to come in with one final level and do the final corrections. But now we can just paint out this and we can go right into our handsome friend's hair here. Pow. Whoops. Okay, so some areas you want to be a little bit cautious with. Uh, you're going to, whenever you paint over, you're going to lose a little bit of the dark. But that's good sometimes if you want to create a sense of blooming, which is a lighting kind of effect that you see. It's used a lot in video games now. DirectX 7 handles blooming really well. Oops, we chopped some of his ear off and shit. I should have used shorter strokes. Okay. 
Okay. See, look at that. We can paint right in there. Even be messy. And it, uh, it doesn't affect the separation. It looks good. Makes people happy. I'm recording a fucking video, man. Sorry about that. This is a busy household that we live in, so there's a lot of communication going on constantly. We may need to end up painting this whole thing on the background. Also, one thing we want to make sure here is that our edge, or separation, is good because another mark of a, a real giveaway on a photoshopped uh, image is uh, kind of these feathered areas. Having a little bit of that is okay because there's a theory in art called the disappearing edge which states that in situations where you have forms of similar value passing over each other uh, value when the angle, when the lighting, all things are considered are taken into account and presented on the image. You have this, uh, this kind of disappearing edge in some spots so, looking like the two forms are kind of blending together, but when you consider the lines in other areas of the depiction of the form, uh, what you're dealing with really is a pattern. Your mind kind of fills it in. So even though you don't see the edge, you sort of know it's there. And it kind of reflects what actually happens in nature. Like if you see you know, obviously a guy painted up against a wall, right? And it's just like the guy is painted the same as the wall. You know, you, you probably won't see him right away because it's similar value, right? Same thing is true in art. That was a horrible analogy, but it sort of gets the point across. Okay, so we're almost done here. Only problem is now our friend kind of looks really dark in contrast to the white background because like if we look at the original image you know everything in an image is relative right Oops. everything is relative so it's like you know when we squint and we look at the value of our friends face and his skin you know, it's relative to what's going on in the background. So in order to make it believable, we kind of have to just up the contrast, uh, sorry, drop the contrast and up the brightness a little bit so that it's kind of more in key with the background. And I think right there is the range that we're going for. So we'll just give it one final look over. Yeah, looks good to me. So there you have it. That is image editing using Curve Mask Dropouts. Cheers.